there are things people can do to be better for what we're doing. If there's employee positions that need to be filled, it's always nice if you can fill it as opposed to waiting for the buyer to do so. If you only have a compilation, go and get a review. If you only have a reviewed financial statement, go and get an audit. But on the whole, we're only working with healthy companies here. Um, as long as you're producing and uh, growing, that's what buyers are really looking for. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Rick Becker. He's the managing director and co-founder at Cross Keys Capital. Rick, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kelsey. Really appreciate you having me. Yeah, excited to have you. So, Rick, why don't you start and tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I think it's a pretty simple story. I uh, was a accountant by training, went to James Madison University, finished first in my business school class, thought I was going the route of an accounting person. Uh, my next door neighbor uh, got into the Wharton Business School and I said, whoa, that's interesting. How do he sneak in? I should apply. <laughs> Uh, I got in and I thought I was going to major in insurance. And between my first and second year, I sold my uncle's business for 10 times EBITDA and said, boy, this is easy. I should try this for a living and graduated and feel like I never changed jobs uh, since 1995. But uh, my company was acquired by First Union, now Wells Fargo. And uh, when Wells, uh, when First Union and Wachovia merged, I said, I'm going to do this on my own. And we founded Cross Keys Capital in 2002. Um, so it, all we do is one thing. I think we do it pretty well. We <clears throat> sell privately held businesses for uh, people who are looking to take cash off the table. So we're probably best described by what we don't do. And we don't take people public. We don't work for buyers. We don't manage money. We have no other financial products to sell. So it's a very conflict-free organization. And we're based in Fort Lauderdale and about 24 or 25 people today. And it's been a nice ride from 2002 forward. Wow, that's fantastic. And it sounds like, you know, you've had a very interesting journey yourself to lead you to, you know, Cross Keys Capital. So it sounds like, you know, not necessarily staying in your lane, but really, you know, being very specific and having one expertise is really what differentiates Cross Keys Capital from its competition. Am I hearing that right? I think that's true. So for 25 years, people have said, why don't you go into private equity? Why don't you buy companies? If you took just a little sliver of all the deals you've done, which is now over $4 billion in value, you would have a great asset management business. And we didn't listen to any of that advice. We stay true to our knitting. Um, founder owned. We just, we have the ability to change generations, uh, grandkids, lives, et cetera. And while our deals are small potatoes in the big scheme of things, our average deal is 40, $50 million of transaction value. It's, it's what we love doing. It yeah. enables yeah. first generation capital to come in. And we've had some great wins and businesses that have blown up and become really big from what we've done. So um, I really have stayed true to what we started out to do. As the world has gotten more and more money, we still have decided we're gonna be two to 10 of EBITDA and this is what we do each and every day. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And you know, I think it's an important note, like you said, you have the experience from, you know, scaling other companies successfully, you know, getting acquired. So what did the growth, what has the growth looked like for Cross, Cross Keys Capital? Um, I remember when we were six people working out of a closet in downtown Fort Lauderdale saying, <laughs> boy, I never want to get any bigger. This is managing employees in this business, it's tough. But with the help of David and Bill, who've been two great partners for the years, um, one deal leads to the next. Mm -hmm. When you do a good job in a certain vertical, uh, somebody else knows a friend, et cetera. And that's really, we've built our business on word of mouth with very little advertising. So I don't think we ever dreamed of being 25 people. I think we would, while we love our team and it's terrific, there's no goal here to get to 50. Yeah. Uh, the partners still are very active in the deals and we're just thrilled to be able to produce and hit the closing line 70 to 80% of the time and of the deals that we work. I wish it was 100%, it just doesn't happen to be that way. 
So <laughs> when I look back at the growth, uh, the fact that we walk down the hallway and see so many people, it's a little bit surprising. We had a few years ago, we broke the firm into healthcare and non-healthcare just because we know we needed some specifics just so we weren't having 25 people in every meeting. Um, and I think that's that's helped us. But you know, we talk about our businesses that we represent growing and are you going to grow 10 or 20 percent a year? There are days we almost feel like a failure that we haven't grown our business, you know, much above 20 or 30 million dollars a year of revenue. But it's provided a good uh, good income for our people, our team, et cetera. And mm -hmm. the goal wasn't growth. The goal was to do a good job for our clients. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned breaking the company up into kind of having a healthcare sector and, you know, just, I don't want to call it the, the other side, but are there different sectors of industries that Cross Keys Capital tends to work with, whether it be like, like you said, healthcare or manufacturing, are there, are there different kind of verticals? Yeah, it's more defined by what we don't do. I appreciate okay. you asking. So we don't do bio life sciences. We don't do products on healthcare. It's much more healthcare services. Okay. A lot of physician practice management, um, all the ologies uh, from anesthesiology to psychology to dermatology, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the healthcare team. The group that I lead is the generalist group. A lot of aerospace and defense, a lot of staffing, business services. Right now we have two large niche manufacturers. Um, easy to understand. So we won't do heavy regulatory businesses. We won't get involved in insurance or banking, things that can be easily understood and basically are consolidating sectors. So right now, HVAC in the um, electrical services subcontractor world is busy. We're staying very busy in that. But um, when that will slow up and eventually it uh, certainly will, we're really glad that we're selling a steel tank manufacturer and getting involved with plants and horticulture. And last year's claim to fame was we sold the largest and a great business for um, COVID. A lot of people weren't dating and they were staying home and we sold the largest sexual women's health or toy business uh, in the country. So we do get, I think it's what my staff loves. We get to be involved in a lot of different businesses and as long as you follow a tried and true process, uh, that's really what we aim for here at Cross Keys. Yeah. And so it sounds like when you're looking at, you know, inter working with a company, it sounds like they have some challenges that, you know, you know, you, you know, where the company stands, you know, what you do and you don't do. And then, you know, making sure it fits with within, you know, the Cross Keys capital model. So would you say the biggest challenge that your customers have before they start i guess what is the biggest challenge that your customers have before they start working with cross keys capital um there are things people can do to be better for what we're doing if there's employee positions that need to be filled it's always nice if you can fill it as opposed to waiting for the buyer to do so if you only have a compilation go and get a review if you only have a reviewed financial statement go and get an audit but on the whole, we're only working with healthy companies here. Um, as long as you're producing and uh, growing, that's what buyers are really looking for. So yeah. we're not really asking our clients to change much. I think the hardest thing is everybody knows somebody from, it's been 11, 12 straight good years in M&A. And when you have a friend at the country club who sold their business for 10 or 12 times EBITDA, and your business is only worth six or seven, sometimes it's hard for someone to understand, well, why am I not as good as, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry down the street? Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that we'll educate, we'll do valuations for free, we'll show the comps. And we just want to make sure there's a meeting of the minds because we don't charge big retainers. We're all about success. And we just want to make sure our clients go into the process with a thorough understanding of what to expect. Mm -hmm. What would you say the most significant misconception, either in the industry, um, you know, or about M and A's? What would you say the biggest misconception would be about about um, that? It's easy to sell your business. It's like selling a house. It's <laughs> far, far from selling a house. The buyer universe is large, um, as multiples have risen, risen on average from five to seven times trailing twelve months earnings. That's good. It's you know twenty plus percent increase. Um, with that has come extra due diligence and due diligence has become lengthy in time and a proctology exam where they look at absolutely everything and third-party mm -hmm. consultants are brought in even for the smallest of 20 million dollar transactions mm 
Mm -hmm. So I, I think people think, oh, I'm going to get a buyer. They're going to love my business. They will love your business. You will find a buyer. But unless you go through all the steps that it takes to sell your business, and on average, it takes six to seven months to sell a business, wow. you won't be wow. able to hit the finish line. So I think the biggest misconception is it's easy to do and I can do it relatively quickly. And sometimes it's I can use my everyday corporate attorney. Um, well, a corporate attorney, maybe, but your divorce attorney and your HR attorney are not going to help you hit the finish line. And uh, it could be the reason your deal does not close. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to ask if you've seen that before. Oh, <laughs> uh, never. OK, good. <laughs> Just and, uh, we, try, we try to help people. We get nothing for bringing in attorneys. But um, today you don't even need a local attorney. You just need someone yeah. good. We normally will suggest three or four in your locale or in your industry. And we really want to help people because we know what it if you're going to spend all this time and it's thousands of hours, um, you would like to make sure that at the end of the day, that pot of gold isn't elusive. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, Rick, as we start to wrap up this conversation, is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with about Cross Keys Capital, about investment banking, anything you want to leave our listeners with? Um, it's a broad question. I would, it, I, I would basically start with about half of our business is local. Uh, in Florida. We wish there were more great businesses in Florida that we could stay off of airplanes as we've aged as the partner group. Um, that's just not the case. So what we're looking for are consolidating great businesses who could even become greater under the tutelage of a financial buyer or a large strategic. Um, as we're in Florida, it's surprising that very few people want to join the investment banking industry. The sexy part of the business is private equity and we're going to be the buyer. We're going to get a piece of the ownership. I love what we do here. I think we add great value being on the sell side of the industry um, and knowing all the buyers and knowing the mistakes that cause a deal not to happen. I think investment banking brings great value to people. Um, but for that, they need to understand, you know, we're not just a broker. We're not just someone who's going to flip out a one pager. You have to put the work in. You have to build a sim. You have to go to the decent number of buyers. You have to have the good Rolodex. You have to have the strong CRM system. But if you do it right, this isn't a very hard business. It can have great rewards and it can build great companies along the way. I just think some people want that Kardashian immediacy of can I do it tomorrow? And here we go. Let's just sell our business. This group, this one group called me, they're the buyer. Yes, I've, I've heard that story way too many times. I think if you stick to process, mm -hmm. um, work with the tried and true, this, this can be exciting for both the seller who we represent as well as ourselves and our team. And the buyer can end up with a phenomenal way to grow their business and satisfy Wall Street. That's fantastic. Well, Rick, this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you breaking down all things cross keys, capital investment, baking, you know, talking about the process that you have, you know, what works, um, you know, from your experience. And I appreciate you being on business ninjas today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great to have you. Awesome.